and welcome to our channel. Today we'll tell you all the discoveries NASA made about Pluto thanks to New Horizons. So without further ado, let's get started. Do you remember how Pluto lost its spot as the ninth planet in the solar system a few years ago? Even though scientists didn't think it was a planet, they kept trying to learn more about this interesting world. The New Horizons spacecraft was sent into space to learn as much as it could about Pluto, which is now a small planet. New Horizons was the first spaceship to get close to Pluto, its five moons, and an object in the Kuiper Belt. Two things made the scientists on New Horizons want to go to Pluto as soon as possible. The first one was about Pluto's atmosphere. Since 1989, Pluto has been moving farther away from the Sun, so it gets less heat each year. Scientists think that Pluto's atmosphere will freeze out as its temperature drops, which is why the team wanted to get there while there was still time to study an atmosphere that was thicker. The second reason was to draw as much of Pluto and Charon as I could. The North Pole and other places above the Arctic Circle on Earth have six months of darkness and six months of light. In the same way, some parts of Pluto or Charon don't see the sun for decades at a time. Pluto and Charon would have been harder to see because of a long Arctic night, which made it harder for the spaceship to take pictures of the surface in reflected sunlight. Even though NASA's New Horizons project went by Pluto almost eight years ago, scientists are still learning from the journey. New Horizons flew just 7,800 miles above Pluto's frozen surface on July 14, 2015, giving people their first close-up view of the small planet. The mission crew is still looking over the data that Horizons collected during the visit, and as new results show, they are finding some very interesting things. Researchers from New Horizons shared their results at the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference, which took place both in Texas and online. One discovery linked Pluto's strange flip to its icy basin. Another found interesting but strange views on the dwarf planet's surface. And a third showed the building blocks that made up the snowman-shaped object Arakov, which New Horizons flew by on January 1, 2019. Like Earth, Pluto flipped on its side at some point in the past. However, scientists don't know much about Pluto's direction before the flip or how much it changed its orientation. Scientists who are using data from New Horizons to look into Pluto's geologic past hope to find clues that will help them explain this terrible event. Now, a group of experts has linked Pluto's tilt to the formation of Sputnik Planitia, a 620-mile-wide basin that makes up half of Pluto's famous heart-shaped part. Scientists have known for a while that Sputnik, which is full of nitrogen ice, had a big effect on moving the small planet's surface around. Using pictures sent back by New Horizons during the 2015 flyby, they are now trying to figure out how Pluto turned. They found parallel mountain ranges and deep valleys this way, which they think are part of a world tectonic system. These bumps are more than 186 miles wide and about the same distance from the North Pole of Pluto. But because Pluto's direction has changed in the past, none of the landscapes seen now are where they were originally. Oliver White, a co-investigator on New Horizons from the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute in California, said during a talk at LPSC, We can't really explain that with Pluto the way it is now. He said that these features probably came from being near Pluto's equator and moved to where they are now, closer to the poles, because of the flip. The team led by White also found that Pluto's deep water probably pushed Sputnik and helped move most of the small planet's mass toward its equator. Researchers are using data from New Horizons to learn more about Pluto's more recent traits as well as its older landscapes. The probe has already found big amounts of methane near Pluto's equator. Some of these deposits are as tall as buildings on Earth. Scientists said on Tuesday that they had new information that suggests these knife-like features go all the way to Pluto's far side, past what New Horizons could see during its 2015 visit. Ishan Mishra, a postdoctoral researcher at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, said in a statement, The discovery of these features just adds to our understanding of the processes that shape Pluto and other icy planets in our solar system. It also shows how complex, dynamic, and varied planetary surfaces like Pluto's are. On Earth, these kinds of towers are called penitents. They are made of water ice and are only a few meters tall. When it comes to Pluto, though, 
These traits are mostly found at the planet's highest points and cover hundreds of majors. At those heights, methane freezes out of Pluto's thin atmosphere when it's cold, and it dissolves back into gas when it gets warmer. The current study used pictures taken by New Horizons Long Range Reconnaissance Imager LORRI, to look into how light reflected from surfaces changes when seen from different directions. Because the surfaces were rougher than average roughness of Pluto, they found similar methane absorption patterns on Pluto's far side, Mishra said in his talk. He said that these bladed landscapes are probably one of the most common things on Pluto. New Horizons went by Arakoff, a small object in the Kuiper belt that looks a bit like a flattened snowman, on January 1, 2019. At 4 billion miles from Earth, it was the farthest object that a spacecraft had ever visited. This is also the most basic because it is far from the Sun and has a deep freeze. Arakoff is a delicate combination of two objects that used to circle each other. The experts say that the bigger of the two lobes, called Wenu, is made up of 12 rocks grouped together around a larger slab. The newest study says that Wenu didn't form as a whole, but rather from pieces of rock that were already in the farthest reaches of the solar system. Alan Stern of the Southwest Research Institute in Colorado, who is in charge of New Horizons, said in a statement, this is surprising and a new piece in the puzzle of how planetesimals, small objects that are like building blocks for planets, like Arakoff and other Kuiper Belt objects come together. In the early days of the solar system, millions of frozen objects the size of kilometers came together to make the Kuiper Belt, a large donut-shaped area near the edge of the system. Stern says that some of them joined together to make Wenyu, but these small items didn't merge quickly, which is why Wenyu is so long. When fast-moving objects hit each other, their spins throw away material, making forms that are round. Stern's team thinks the rocks were moving slower than one meter per second when they joined together because they kept their shape. Previous research showed that Wenyu tidally interacted with the smaller of the two objects. Both of them lost rotational speed by ejecting matter before they merged to form the Arakoth we see today. Stern and his team found that each of Arakoth's 12 rocks is more than 3 miles wide. Since Wenyu is only 6 miles thick, scientists think that the 12 rocks grouped around its equator make up most of its body and reach to its far side, which New Horizons did not see. Scientists also said that in the future, New Horizons will take color pictures of Uranus and Neptune. Stern says that the probe's unique location in the Kuiper Belt will let it make observations that can only be done by a spacecraft far beyond Uranus and Neptune. Spacecraft outside of our solar system can only see the ice giant sides that face Earth or the light that they bounce back into space. New Horizons will be able to gather information about the light that is spread by the far sides of the planets, though. Today, scientists said, Observations will be made while the planets spin instead of the test photos that were taken in 2019. They say that the new pictures, even though they aren't very good and only show the two ice giants as small blue dots, will help scientists learn more about how cloud patterns form on the ice giants. That's it for today guys hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.